G'day, and welcome to Ollie 35mm, user-based, quasi-empirical, cheap and cheerful videos on Olympus Zwicko branded 35mm lenses on digital sensors, specifically the Micro Four Thirds OMD EM5 Mark II, the APS-C NEX F3, that's a Sony NEX F3, and the Sony full frame A7 lens. This is uh, on an OM series lens I'm talking about today, and I'm gonna share with you the 50 millimeter F3.5 macro. And I've actually left it on the Sony A7 today just to give you a bit of an idea of what it looks on a mirrorless camera. It uh, fits quite well on, on all three, even the smaller ones it uh, works quite well with. And uh, the reason why it's sitting on here is that this has been my go-to lens on the Sony for probably a year or so. If I'm not testing other lenses, and uh, I actually also have the 28 to 70 uh, digital uh, lens on there as well, which I hardly ever use. If I'm not testing the other lenses, this generally tends to be the lens that I will keep on this camera. Partly because I do a lot of macro work, but partly because it is a really good all-round lens if you need to just grab the camera and blat off a couple of shots. So allow me to just take this lens off. Uh, it's a little bit tight on this adapter. And I'll talk about the lens itself and see if I can convince you as to why I think it is such a great little all-rounder because I honestly believe that it is the 50 millimeter f3.5 and the 50 millimeter f2 which would focus to infinity so hence me saying a great all-rounder let me talk about it briefly as a macro lens first though it's a one to two macro or a half life size macro unless you put a 25 millimeter extension tube which makes it a one to one macro and uh, that's quite makes still quite a reasonable one to to one macro even though Olympus actually suggests that you should use the 80 millimeter f4 for one-to-one -one work the truth of it is though you've got to then buy that you've got to buy the bellows or you've got to buy the auto extension tube and, and use it whereas this a simple 25 millimeter extension tube and for those who shoot digital of course you don't have to have the automatic you can use the, the manual extension tube if you like and of course you can get yourself a third party ones as well they're, they're all pretty cheap so for the cost of this lens and probably about another fifty dollars for a twenty-five mm auto extension tube, you have a one-to-one -one macro. So that's uh, one of the reasons why it is very good value. It is a nice all-round lens as well. It uh, is a nifty fifty. It uh, is a little bit slow, of course, because the uh, minimum aperture, sorry, the maximum aperture is f three point five, f three point five to a minimum aperture of f twenty two. And with the exception of f3.5 in the uh, in the corners, it's actually pretty sharp all the way through the range, which is really, really nice. There is hardly any distortion in it, uh, in the horizontal slash verticals, and a pin cushion. Uh, there is pin cushion in the f1.8 and also in the f1.4. Uh, this one is uh, is not even very noticeable. At, uh, at close distances. You'll see that in the test shots if you go onto my Flickr page and actually have a look between the three. It handles chromatic aberration really, really well. In fact, I haven't been able to find it, uh, chromatic aberration, at any of the apertures. Now, it's not to say that it's not there, it's just in the samples that I've done and the tests that I've done, it is not there. Okay, it focuses from 23 centimeters which is roughly about nine inches in the in the old money and uh, all the way through to infinity which is very very handy not all macro lenses do that so if you're buying a macro lens and you want to use it for other things be careful make sure it does focus to infinity probably the only issue um, that I can think of with the focus and it isn't a big issue is that it actually has a focus track of about 330 degrees. Now most of that is between 0.23 and 0.7 of a meter. So it's not a real big deal, I don't think. Uh, in fact, it has a very low track 
4 uh, from point 0.7 through to infinity which is uh, which is rather handy in fact it might even be better than the uh, than the other ones I'm not, I'm not too sure I've, I've never really paid much attention to it and it hasn't bothered me in day-to-day -day photography but it is something um, I don't know if it affects video videographers or not but it is something that you may wish to think about uh, and it extends quite a bit too uh, compared to the 1.8 and the 1.4 as you focus it is when it's all folded up or all um, wound up it is 40 millimeters long it's 200 grams which makes it around about uh, what's it, about an ounce or 30 grams more than the f1.8 and about nine millimeters uh, or I don't know what that is a third of an inch or something um, longer than the f1.8 as well so it is still very usable and very small and light compared to uh, other lenses out there on the market okay so as I was saying it is uh, a little bit soft at uh, 3.5 in the edges but it snaps in at f5.6 F8 is probably its best across all three of the digital sensors and really to be honest with you on film as well I, I've noticed that because I've taken a lot of photographs on film with this lens as well all the way through to f22 it's uh, it's actually good uh, which is unusual uh, quite often when you get down to those minimum apertures of of 16 to 22 it gets the, the lenses get very average but uh, it holds together really well on uh, this little lens which of course is also great uh, for macro work as well so they've put a lot of thought into this little lens now this one will set you back probably between two and two hundred and fifty dollars they're not cheap so even though they were the the, the budget macro of the day if you will uh, people understand what good quality these little lenses are and there is well, i wouldn't say a premium price on them but there's a little bit more than maybe you would have expected you pick up a uh, 1.8 for 80 to 100 dollars. You'll pick up a 1.4 for anything up to about 150 dollars. Uh, you know when it's a reasonable price. And so this is a little bit more, but you do have that macro feature that goes with it. And if you don't mind the slow maximum aperture, then uh, this really is a contender, I think, against normal 50 millimeters as well. The F2, just to, to throw that in the mix, the F2 is probably about double the price. It's at around about $500 uh, to buy. I have not got a copy of the F2, so I don't know what it's like. I have seen photographs, and it looks amazing. However, you'll have to go somewhere else to get a bit of an idea of what the F2 is like. So, folks, that's the 50mm F3.5 Nifty Macro 50 and uh, it's well worth even if you have a say a 1.8 or a 1.4 thinking about putting one of these fellas in your collection if you have any interest in taking f photographs of things closely because it is a great little macro lens as well as a good old rounder contrasty sharp renders colors really really nicely hardly any distortion at all no problems at all with that uh, chromatic aberration really is a great value lens even at two to two hundred and fifty dollars i think anyway that's uh, in my mind so that's a lot for the day thank you very much for listening thank you very much for watching we'll speak to you next time bye